Okay, so today we're going to look at misfires and how they affect fuel trims. Typically, most fuel misfires are going to have a significant effect on fuel trims. You're going to see on a three or four cylinder engine anywhere from 20 to 30 percent positive total trims. Your ignition misfires typically have a minimal effect on fuel trims. You're going to be looking at about, you know, three to eight or ten percent max on your typical ignition misfire. Engine mechanical issues can have various effects on fuel trims which will be covered in another class. Beyond this, an ignition misfire is going to cause the post-cat oxygen sensor to go rich, whereas a fuel misfire is going to cause your post-cat to go lean. Now let's think about this. Uh, if you got a fuel misfire, you essentially have one cylinder that has now become an air pump. And since your oxygen sensor only sees oxygen, you're going to have an abundance of oxygen in the tailpipe. What's going to end up happening is you're going to go extremely lean. The PCM is going to make a pretty heavy fuel trim correction. And uh, you're still going to be pretty lean after the catalytic converter. So that's why you see your post-cat oxygen sensor stay lean as well. With an ignition misfire, you dump all that oxygen down the tailpipe, but you also displace it with some atomized fuel. This kind of fools the oxygen sensor, and we do not see a significant fuel trim effects. We also do see the post-cat oxygen sensor stay pretty rich, you know, as a kind of a tattletale that, hey, there's uh, definitely a rich mixture going on here. Now, just to, to be aware, Many vehicles do go in open loop and shut off injectors when you detect a misfire. So you could have a bad ignition coil uh, looking like a bad fuel injector. So it's important that you remember this and uh, check loop status on the car like we've talked about. So we're going to look at an 03 Mitsu Eclipse. This is a four cylinder single bank engine. And we're going to look, get a baseline here with no misfire we have a total trim of 4%. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Okay, we see our long-term fuel trim on bank 1 is 4.7, about negative 0.7, so about total trims of 4%. You can see the pre-cat oxygen sensor is switching, so everything is happy. We are in fuel control. And you can see the post-cat oxygen sensor is staying steady at about uh, 680 millivolts. So now let's look at what an ignition misfire looks like. With an ignition misfire, we're going to zoom in again. You can see our total fuel trim. It's about 10%. So there was a change, but it wasn't as significant. As you can see with our pre-cat oxygen sensor, we're back switching again. So we are in fuel control. However, notice our post-cat does go higher. We were at about 680 millivolts earlier. Now we're at 900 millivolts. So there was a change with our post-cat oxygen sensor back out of there check out our fuel misfire we have a, in this case a total trim of 19 percent so I'm going to zoom in on this data we see a much more significant fuel trim change we also see our oxygen sensor does get back into fuel control but that post cat oxygen sensor stays very lean so these are some tips that will help us out we can look at fuel trims and ox rear cat oxygen sensors to help us determine whether or not we have a fuel misfire or an ignition misfire and save us time on that component level testing like we're always talking about. We want to do as much system level testing as we can and then move on to component level testing.